Hey, so today we are here with the PolyN synth and this is a continuation of my PolyN engine series. So going over every engine and today we are talking about granular synthesis with grains on this thing. It's a really nice synthesizer that we're able to throw any sample into it, really mangle up to get some really cool interesting textures as well as pad sounds, but we can get some more pattern or percussive elements and get some really cool like textured elements. So it's a really fun one to play with. There's a little bit going on, but this video we're going to go through every single setting on here, have a discussion how it works. It's a little bit of jumping in between, so I try and highlight that as I go through, and then we'll demo some of the sounds at the end so you get a sense of what this machine is capable of. And I do really enjoy this one, especially when I'm trying to put a little bit of texture in the background or some really large evolving spatial pad that I'm working on. Really nice for that. So enough talking, let's get straight into it. All right, we are here with the PolyN synth and today we are talking about that little granular synthesizer grains and it does a really nice job for making sound effects but also some really nice pad sounds but again with this one I will say that is quite a beefy synth so you don't get many voices with it only one however it's a little bit of tricky stuff that's happening under the hood to get some paraphonic stuff going on. So I've just got a basic synth loaded up, just the initialized patch. As you can see, there's a bit of polyphony there, but we'll go through every setting and just sort of go through and understand what's going on. So being a grain or granular synth, we're using samples as our sound source. So with this one, this knob here allows you to scroll through a whole bunch of sounds that you can put on the device. So this lives in a folder under samples. So if you've got your own custom samples and you wanna try them out, you can stick them in here. But it's really quick to just be able to change the sound and just being able to swap it up. So the next one is position. So this is along the sample where that is gonna happen. So you can start from the start or you can go right to the end and you can create some sound effects that way. We can do a bit of invisible hand stuff later about scrubbing through that so we can create like one shots, but we'll leave that one there. The next one along is position spread and this allows us to sort of randomize or change that start point. So if we turn that right down to the very start, that initial point that we're sampling, this position here, it's always gonna be the same. It's probably a little bit more apparent with drums, but if we turn that up, adds a little bit more organic sound to it because it's picking a point along that position to start from. The next one is grain size. So I'm just going to turn that one down. We'll talk about it in a sec, but see how clicky that is. So that's how much it's sampling before it'll stop the grain from playing out. But if we turn that right up, we have a lot longer grain samples to work with. So, and this one ties in with density. So as you could hear, very like short grains, but we can add a lot more into the sound itself. So these are the little sounds that are bouncing around. And that's how we sort of get in our polyphony. Cause if we hold a low note and then add a high note, you can hear how the little grains are assigning a note as they're playing. So the next one I'm going to talk about is time spread. So this works a bit with the model. So we'll talk about that in a sec, but Think of this one as a way that it randomizes the start position. So if we just change this one to burst, we'll talk about that in a sec. But you can hear how like on rhythm that is. And if we adjust the time, you can hear out of sync that gets. So they're really handy if you want to create some more organic pad sounds, or if you try and do some sort of drum beat and you try and sample parts of like a aim and break, you can use that to make a more rigid to the time sort of deal. So position spread and time spread allows you to add some variability, some more organic feel, but with the whole samples themselves, you can create some really organic stuff. So next on the list is grain shape. So this one allows us to bend our sound. So think of this like an envelope for the grain and it's got two axes that we can work on. So if I scroll this way, you'll probably notice with the sound form, it's going to come more like a saw wave. So this point is going to have a lot more of a transient to the sound, but if we scroll that back to the center, it's gonna create like this triangle wave of sculpting the sound. But if we go the other direction, it's going to like, uh, it's more like a warp, but it expands out until 100%. So you get a little bit of 
clipping with this one so it can create some like granular clicky effects which is quite nice as well so just think of that when you're sculpting like our grains like if you want more of that sort of transient which works well with time spread and all that so there's a lot of these variables on this one that sort of interplay with other parts if you're trying to do a very specific thing but that comes down to model so we've got cloud and we've got burst so cloud think of this as more like just random smatterings of grains across the sequence so if you're making more of an organic pad sound that one works really well but burst is like on a particular point especially linked to tempo it's going to fire off and continually have that sort of play through if we put it on cloud it's going to try and create a wash of sound and it doesn't matter how many grains you add it's going to try and add that many at that one individual point so that's going to be linked to the BPM. And this last one, pan spread, this one allows us to move our little grains across the stereo field. So if I just put that, just so we can hear some grains, and then I'll turn this one up. See how they're starting to bounce left and right across the field? So this gives our pads a lot more width that we can have, or you're creating some like interesting little drum textures, you can use that as well. But really granular synthesis is really flavorful when you just get those random little sound effects thrown in there and just start mangling them up. And you've got a whole bunch of different areas in this in the original menu to really start tweaking and getting something out of it. So enough with the first menu, let's jump into the second one. So we've got some more of that melodic content so we can tune our sound. So goes up and down by an octave so you can do it like that burst sync so as we have that burst view so we'll just go back here switch it to burst we hear it on sync with burst sync this one if we turn it off it's going to turn this one to hurt so like our wet LFOs of the other synthesizers we can change that based on Hertz, but if we have beat sync on, we can sync it with the tempo which links to that knob there. So if you wanna add some nice detune to the little grains that are playing along, you can do that via here. That's a nice little texture here. Fine tune is sort of like the nice, if you just need to tweak a sample to get it on point. So this next one here, size spread, is sort of linked to grain size here. So this is like the control with uh, position and time spread. We can use this one to randomize the different lengths of it. So if I scroll that right down, you can hear how each individual grain has the exact same length. But if we turn this up, we can hear how some of those grains got longer tails and some of them got shorter tails. So this is sort of mixed up in between. So you're bouncing around a few of these menus here. Uh, direction, so if it goes forward or backwards, so if we just tweak this one, and if we start going back, we can reverse the sample playback. Burst retrig, so this is when it flies, so we've just got it on note. So we can have that sort of polyphony stuff going on. Uh, one shot is only going to play it when you hit the note. So if you wanted to do like a one shot and have it scrub through the position in the first menu, you can do something like that. And free running. It doesn't matter how fast I'm pressing that button, it's always gonna keep with that tempo. So we're up to the last menu now. And as you can see, we've got some of those original sort of oscillator elements. So we've got a glide, so we can shape the note. So if you hold down a low note and hit a high note, See how quickly it's going to lerp into that new note. We have a volume control for the oscillator itself. So if we need to bring it back, we can do it here. And paraphony. So as I was saying, this only uses one oscillator and it does take up quite a lot of juice on the poly and synth. But paraphony means that every one of those little grains, we can assign a note value. So that's how I can hold a low note and have a high note playing at the same time. That's how it's doing it. It is a paraphonic, so it's not polyphonic in the way that it has its own filter and envelope for each individual grain, but it's all run through the same filter at the end. So just with that oscillator section, there's a lot to be had and really what makes granular synthesis shine is those sound effects. So feel free to experiment and stick a whole bunch of weird little samples on here and you're gonna have a good time just creating a whole bunch of new sounds. So that's enough about the granular oscillator. Let's have a look at some of the other features. So we have a really nice filter on this one, similar to a bunch of the other ones, but not as many filter types to play with, but we still have like our way to add like a cutoff, a resonance, 
and we've got like a basic low pass, high pass, band pass and notch. So each one of them allows us to sculpt the sound in a bit of way. We have an amp envelope that's controlling the amount coming through and note tracking as well. So if I hit a low note, that's going to play a lower version of that. If I play a high note, that notch is going to jump up. But if I was to turn that to zero, you'll probably notice that these low notes are a little bit more brighter. So that's how note tracking works. So enough about the filter, let's have a look at our envelope. So we have our amp envelope. This one's controlling the volume. So we can sculpt this in particular ways. So if I was doing a pad, I'd probably create something using the stain a little bit down like that. Maybe get a little bit of an attack. So that's the start coming in. Then decay will fade down to that low level. So as you can hear, it will cut out. And then you have release. So when I let go of that finger, it's going to stop quite a lot, but if I have it like that, it's going to take a long time to pass out. So you can like, if you're doing like a drum bass granular thing, you can just use an AD, just turn off the sustain and release. And then you just got these two to control with. But if you're doing pads, you might as well get the most out of the ADSR. But we do have some other types of filters, uh, envelopes as well. We have one that's connected to the filter. So like this variable here that I pointed out just before, that's what this one's controlling. As you can see, it's doing that AD setup. So you can have the filter go out a little bit more. You can make it really clicky. So there's a bunch of ways you can control that. And then we have an auxiliary one, which is just a floating one. And that gives us a little bit of control with our invisible hands. Talking about invisible hands, we do have some LFOs that we can work with. We've got two to work with, so it's really nice. But with LFOs, uh, we have our sync option. So this is tied to the ratio. So if you don't want to work with Bit, like with the tempo, you can create your own custom frequencies for this. And this is really good for organic stuff because it's not going to fall in on the beat. You can create some really cool textures and stuff like that. Uh, but if you turn it on, you can get it to work with the tempo as well. We've got a bunch of different waveforms that we can use with our sound as well. So we can apply these in different ways. And re-triggering gives us some nice options. So free running meaning it doesn't matter what we do on the synth, it's just going to continually run that LFO in the background. One shot, so if you hit the button, it will do the thing and then do only one cycle. So it's really just doing that part there, which is really handy. If you start running out of envelopes, you can set this up. So I'm just going to do that one. So you can set up a basic envelope, sort of like how we did here with that AD. So it's just a nice way to get an extra envelope where you don't have one. And then the last one is note. So every time we hit a note on the machine, it's going to start the cycle again and move forward. And that's really all the LFO stuff, but we tie this all together with the mod matrix. So this one, we do have six different areas that we can apply our mods. So as you can see, the first column is all those different envelopes and LFOs. We then can apply it to a various area of our oscillator where there's a bunch of different stuff. And then we have our option to apply the effect. So with granular synthesis, it can get very complex and a very good way to start mangling samples. So what I find is I have a sort of sound in my mind that I'm wanting to get to. So if I'm working on a pad sound or I'm mangling a drum beat or I'm trying to make some sort of textural thing, I have that in mind to start with and I just start working towards that. So like picking a sample and start tweaking away to get to where I want. There might be times where I have a happy accident and it leads me in a different direction, but having a mindset of what you want at the end when you're working through granular synth, because it can get quite complex just with how everything sort of interlocked and how organic or how sort of robotic you want to make it, you have those options available to you. So it's a really fun synth. There's one other area I reckon you'll need to know about is having these macros to set up as well. So we can adjust the sound as we go. So that lives under the rotor encoder. So if you click it, go to macros, we have them all there. We have velocity and aftertouch. So I did keep velocity on this time so you can sort of hear how that's playing. But after touches, once you push it down, you got that sort of pressure that you can put onto the pad as well. But if we jump into one of these, how we assign one is we go through and select it. So I push the rotary coder. They'll bring up our menus again. We go around to find the thing that we want to control. So maybe the grain size. 
we touch that rotary encoder and it's going to put it up there and when you start tweaking it and making variables it's usually a good idea to turn it all the way up like this select it make the changes make the sound that you want come back out and then tweak it back to the start and then you'll be able to get an idea of like the A and the B and all the sounds that you get in between. And the other thing too is make sure you give it a good name because it does show up on the synthesizer and you want to be able to describe how the patch is working or how that's editing the sound. So that's really it for this one. It does have a lot of potential, but enough talking about, let's demo some of those patches that are already in here. So I hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration to use the granular synth on here. It does add a lot of texture to whatever sample you've got. And really it's quite fun to just take a sample, throw it out, see how it mangles it up. But having that mindset of what you're trying to create from the start, it's going to guide you through how we set this one up. But there's a lot of capacity here for making some really interesting sounds, especially for pads. Like I really enjoy making those big wide spatial sounds and just having those little grains bounce around in that area. It just adds a lot. And it is quite a chunky boy. It does lose a lot of CPU. You probably noticed it was flashing up here quite a bit, but it, with that one sort of engine that it takes up you can get a lot out of the paraphonica here so doing like pads and chords and all that good stuff so in the end if you did like this one definitely gives it a thumbs up because it does tell the algorithm to push this to other people people that have probably got a poly and synth and they're looking to learn these machines so it really does help them out as well as if you've got any comments or queries please feel free to leave them down below i do try and go down there and answer as many questions as i can relating to the poly and synth or the synth engines on here so it's a bit of a body of knowledge for everyone else and if you got any ideas or wanting to see some of my other synth engine walkthroughs you can find them on my channel and if you do that i look forward to seeing you next time